What is going on guys? My name is the California Cougar and welcome to my NFL playoff predictions. That is right. We are here at the NFL playoffs and today is Saturday. Today is actually the first day of the NFL playoffs. I believe the Bengals and Raiders are the first game and once this video actually gets uploaded that game's probably going to be underway. Unfortunately, I couldn't get this video out earlier this week because of work and a lot of stuff going on. I had a pretty busy schedule this week, so yeah, it was kind of it's unfortunate because I was really hoping that I would be able to get this out earlier, but that's just not the case. So we do what we can do. So first up, the Bengals and the Raiders. Let's get right into this. So the Bengals and the Raiders, Two teams that I don't think a lot of people expected to make the playoffs, especially the Bengals. I think a lot of people thought the Bengals were going to finish in last in that division, but they actually won it. Mainly thanks to Joe Burrow and his spectacular comeback season after tearing his ACL last year. I think he should win Comeback Player of the Year. I know a lot of people think Dak Prescott should win it. I disagree. I think Joe Burrow should win it. I do think Dak is going to win it, but again, I want Joe Burrow to win it so badly. But yeah, Joe Burrow, huge year for him. Joe Mixon, fantastic year for him at running back. You also got Jamar Chase, the young stud wide receiver. Uh, T. Higgins had a fantastic season. Tyler Boyd, C.J. Uzoma, I think is their tight end. Like This Bengals team has a loaded offense, and I would be scared of them if I had to go up against them like in any game in the playoffs this season. And even their defense is not so bad. Their one question mark is their O-line. Yes, their O-line is a lot better than it was last year. It's done a better job of protecting Joe Burrow, but Joe Burrow is still getting sacked quite a bit. So that's the one question mark. Plus, the Raiders have a pretty solid pass rush, so I think there's a good chance Joe Burrow does get sacked a few times. And then you look at the Raiders. The Raiders, Derek Carr... Probably his final year with the Raiders, I would guess, assuming the Raiders don't win the Super Bowl, which I don't think they will. Spoiler alert. But yeah, Raiders overall had a good year, overcame a lot of adversity with the whole John Gruden thing and Henry Ruggs and the DUI. And yeah, that tragic DUI accident that killed a young woman and her dog. That was tragic. But yeah, they overcame all that, and now they're in the playoffs. They won last week on a Dan Carlson 47-yard field goal. I wish he had missed because I would have loved to see them and the Chargers tie, but unfortunately we didn't get that. So yeah, Derek Carr has been solid. Josh Jacobs, solid at running back. Again, they don't have Henry Ruggs anymore, but Hunter Renfro has been a solid receiver for them. Darren Waller's back, so he's going to be a big factor. And then again, with their defense, they have a solid pass rush. So, yeah. Now, these two teams did face each other earlier, and the Bengals absolutely destroyed them. Like, it wasn't even close. And that was in Vegas, too. This game will be in Cincinnati. I do think this game is going to be a little bit closer, but I still like the Bengals here, I think. So, we'll go ahead and click on the Bengals to move on. I like the Bengals here a lot, I think. They're a special team right now. If they focus on O-line in the draft, in the upcoming NFL draft, they have the potential to be like a Kansas City Chiefs level offense. Maybe even better. I don't know. But yeah, like this, this Bengals offense has something brewing. And I really think the Bengals could make a deep run into the playoffs, possibly even go to the Super Bowl. But we will see. So up next is the Bills versus the Patriots. That's the second game on today, I believe. And this will be played in Buffalo. So Bills-Patriots, division rivals, obviously. Patriots won the first time in Buffalo, but then when they went to New England, the Bills absolutely smoked them. Wasn't really all that close to begin with. And plus, in Buffalo, the weather was really bad. So Buffalo ended up playing like absolute trash. But yeah, you look at these two teams. Buffalo, very good overall, I think. Very underrated, I think. A lot of people are kind of sleeping on them, and I don't really know why. Because Josh Allen's a stud. Now, I will say this. The offense does rely heavily on Josh Allen because like he's got a ton of rushing yards. He throws the ball a lot. 
But it's not to say the Bills don't have other weapons. I wish this goddamn messenger would shut up. I hate that it pops up in the lower corner there. But yeah. Anyway, the Bills. Devin Singletary, probably going to be their main back. I think Zach Moss like either tore his ACL or did something significant. So he's out for the year. And then at receiver, Stefan Diggs, solid number one option. Gabriel Davis has been solid lately. Dawson Knox has been a decent option at tight end. And then, of course, their defense. Their rush defense is dangerous, and their pass defense ain't too bad either. So, yeah, I like I like the Bills a lot in this matchup. And then you look at the Patriots. I mean, the Patriots, after losing Tom Brady last year, they're back, and... All of a sudden, they're in the playoffs again. Now, Mac Jones, I mean, he's had a decent little year. Kind of fell off a bit in the second half, but still did enough to get the Patriots into the postseason, so there's that. And then their run game is really strong, too, with Damian Harris and uh, Ramad Stevenson. I think that's the guy's name. But, yeah, he's been solid. Brandon Bolden can be – I think they still have Brandon Bolden on their team. He can be good when he needs to be, so – yeah, they've got a good run game. The problem is they don't really have a lot of receiving options. Like Jacoby Myers and Kendrick Bourne, like you don't really think of those guys as like your number one and number two receivers. And then I guess Hunter Henry is their main tight end. Like he's decent as well. And then of course, like their defense is strong. The Patriots defense is really strong. I think if they're gonna win this game, then it's gonna have to be low scoring and it's gonna have to be very defense based. But I just think the Bills have the Patriots outmatched here, so I'm going to go with the Buffalo Bills to move on to the second round. And by the way, I don't think I gave a score for the Bengals-Raiders game. Bengals-Raiders, Bengals 31, Raiders 20. Bills, I think, will win 27-17 to over the Patriots. That's my guess. It's going to be a good game, I think, but I just think the Bills outmatch the Patriots by a long shot. And then we move over to tomorrow's games. So the first game tomorrow is the Buccaneers versus the Eagles. And, like, this one's a pretty easy one to predict. I just think the Eagles are outmatched here. They benefited from one of the softest schedules in the league. Like, seriously. Their schedule is ridiculously easy. I think the team with the best record that they beat was the Saints or something like that. Like, yeah. Like, I'm not even kidding. Like some 8-9, eight 8-8 and nine, eight and eight team or something like that. Like, they're just not that great of a team. Like, they have potential. I think they're going to be good in a couple years. Jalen Hurts has shown some potential. He's got a noodle arm, but I think he's got some potential. Their run game is really strong when everyone's healthy. I don't know who's going to be healthy for this game, whether it's Miles Sanders, Boston Scott, or if they're going to use Gainwell again. Like, all three of them are very solid running backs, I think. But yeah, I think I think it depends a lot on which one gets the start. I like I have a feeling it's going to be Boston Scott just because I think Sanders was on IR or and Scott was on the COVID list or something. I don't remember for sure. But yeah, and then their receiving attack like Devonta Smith is solid. Who else do they have? Jalen Rager. I mean Dallas Goddard's a good tight end, but that's really it. And then their defense is just kind of whatever. Like it's not really all that great. And then you got the Bucks, of course, with Tom Brady. Like, you know, whenever Tom Brady's in the playoffs, he's a hard guy to bet against. So, yeah, like Tom, Tom Brady in Tampa has been really strong. Even And he has shown that even though his team might have injuries at the receiver position, like with Chris Godwin this year, he's out for the year. Antonio Brown obviously had a lot of drama surrounding him as well. So they don't have those two guys, but they still have Mike Evans, and they still have Gronkowski. And that's really all Tom Brady needs. I don't know if Leonard Fournette's going to be playing, or Ronald Jones for that matter. Like, I don't know if either of them are going to be back for this game. And I don't remember who their third string is. It's like Vaughn or something, like K. Vaughn or something like that. I don't remember for sure, though. But yeah, Tampa... And then, of course, on defense, yeah, they've been hit hard by injuries on defense as well, but they still have a very solid defense. They're getting a couple guys back. I know Jason Pierre-Paul is going to be back. I think they're getting a couple other guys back as well. So, yeah, Tampa Bay has a really strong defense. they got a good O-line, and I think they heavily outmatch the Eagles here. I think the Buccaneers win this game, and I don't freaking messenger, man. Get out of here. 
and I just think they really outmatch the Eagles here, so I don't expect this game to be all that close. 34-17, to the Buccaneers will move on. And then we go to the Cowboys and the 49ers, my game. And this, I think, will be the game of the week. I think it's the game that's going to be the closest margin. And it's got two fairly evenly matched teams. The Cowboys may have the better record. They might have home field. But the 49ers, man, I got to say, I'm impressed with what they've done over the past 10 weeks or whatever it was. They were 3-5 and five in their first eight games. Since then, they've gone 7-2 and two to finish with a 10-7 and seven record and just barely squeak into the playoffs. Barely squeak into the playoffs, but they did it. And they beat some good teams along the way, too, like the Bengals, and they beat the Rams twice. They also beat the Eagles, who are a playoff team. Now, of course, they had trouble against the Cardinals and the Seahawks, but... I mean, other than those two teams, like, they even gave the Titans and the Packers a run for their money. They gave both those teams runs for their money. So I think there's something to be excited about with the 49ers here, and there's definitely something brewing. And then you look at the Cowboys. Cowboys have had, like, not the worst schedule, in, not the easiest schedule in the world, but certainly not the hardest. A lot of the teams they beat were really bad, like their division, basically. They swept their division, so... Six of their wins came from their division alone, and their division's just terrible. I mean, the Giants, the Redskins, and the Eagles. Like, yeah, the Eagles are a playoff team, but again, they benefited from a soft schedule. So, yeah, Cowboys had a very similar schedule. And then a lot of their losses were against good teams, like the Cardinals and the Chiefs. And I think, who else did they play that, that beat them? Oh, they lost to the Raiders as well. So, yeah, that Thanksgiving game, they lost to the Raiders. So, they're a vulnerable team. Now, the 49ers, of course, if they're healthy, then they're going to be good, I think. Elijah Mitchell, fantastic running back. He was great for us this year, replacing Mostert after his injury. And they're even using Debo Samuel like as a secondary running back, which is hilarious, but he's been awesome. And then, of course, at the receiver position, Debo's just a beast. Brandon Ayuk had a really good year, and Jawan Jennings. Last week, Jawan Jennings was huge for us. And then, of course, George Kittle at tight end is never something to be, like, never something to take lightly. He's a beast as well. So, and then their defense, like Nick Bosa, amazing comeback year. I mean, that front seven or whatever, their D-line, like, has been amazing this year. I think they had the fifth most sacks in the NFL this year, and only one person, that being Nick Bosa, has more than 10. So they've got a lot of depth. Plus, Nick Bosa's always getting double teamed, so yeah. I cannot believe he was he was not nominated to All-Pro. That's just criminal. I don't know how that happened. It's a travesty that he's not on that team. I would love to see him use that as motivation to just absolutely level Dak Prescott. That would be amazing. But yeah, and then even their secondary. The 49ers have a lot of people coming back in their secondary. Like, they got Dante Johnson last week. They got Emmanuel Mosley. He made a big impact last week. Ambry Thomas. Like, I've given him a lot of crap this year, but he made that huge play to end the game last week. And then, of course, they're getting Kawan Williams back this week as well. So, and then Jaquiski Tart and uh, Jimmy Ward, they also got those guys back. Like, they got a lot of key pieces back. And they're getting Trent Williams back on their O-line. I think that's going to be huge for them. He'll be a key part in stopping Micah Parsons from getting to Jimmy G. Which is going to be the question mark for this game. Jimmy G is always a question mark. You never know what you're going to get from him. Are we going to get the good Jimmy G, or are we going to get the bad Jimmy G? I think if we get the good Jimmy G, the 49ers will win. But if we get the bad Jimmy G, then the Cowboys are going to win. Speaking of the Cowboys, Cowboys have a solid offense themselves. Dak Prescott, even though I think Joe Burrow should win Comeback Player of the Year, there's no denying that Dak Prescott had a very solid comeback season. Doesn't really run the ball as much as he used to, but he can still throw the ball. Um, Zeke, I think Ezekiel Elliott's overrated. Personally, yeah, he got a thousand yards, but he I don't think he was hurt for a single game. So in seventeen games, is a thousand yards really that impressive? I mean it's not bad. Tony Pollard, 
He's a solid backup, though. I will give Tony Pollard that. So they they have a decent one-two punch, but I think a bit overrated. Mari Cooper, always a solid receiver. Uh, C.D. Lamb, he's kind of their second receiver. He's also very good. And Dalton Schultz has had a solid year at tight end as well. So, yeah, and then, of course, on defense, I mentioned Micah Parsons earlier. He, that dude's a beast. He's going to win Defensive Rookie of the Year for sure. And a lot of people are saying he could be Defensive Player of the Year. I don't know if I agree with that. I think T.J. Watt's going to win that. But, yeah. And then Trayvon Diggs, I'm going to be honest. I think Trayvon Diggs is the most overrated cornerback in the league. And here's why. Everybody is throwing to him. Yes, he has 11 interceptions this year. That might look good on paper. But when everyone's throwing to you and you're constantly getting burned for 1,000 yards, I think he gave up over 1,000 yards this year to receivers. So, yeah, like, is he really that great? Sure, he gets a lot of picks, but that's because everyone's throwing to him. So, yeah, and that's kind of why he gave up so many yards as well. Everyone's just throwing to him. So is he really that great? Like, he's probably good, I'm sure. But he's not the best defensive player in the league like Cowboys fans seem to think he is. So, yeah. Now, this game, I think it could go either way. I think both teams have the potential to win. Obviously, it's going to be in Dallas, so it's going to be difficult for the 49ers to win. But I think it's going to come down to Jimmy G and how good he is. Obviously, last week against the Rams, in the first half, we got the bad Jimmy G. But in the second half, we got the good Jimmy G. We also got our run game going, and that's going to be key for us as well. Can the 49ers get that run game going? If they can, they're going to be tough to beat. And that is why I am going with the upset here. I am going with the 49ers to take down the Dallas Cowboys in Dallas. They will move on to Green Bay. All right. And then Sunday night game, Chiefs versus Steelers. Yeah, I don't really think this one's that hard to predict. We saw this matchup in Arrowhead Stadium just a few weeks ago. The Steelers got absolutely destroyed. The game was never close. They were just so outmatched. And I'm expecting more of the same here. By the way, 49ers versus Cowboys, 28-24, to 24, 49ers. That's my score. Yeah, as for this game, I mean, I just think the Chiefs outmatched them heavily. So, yeah, I'm going with the Kansas City Chiefs to win this game 35-14 to over the Steelers. Steelers do have a good defense. I mean, I will say that. Can we shut up? Jesus Christ. But, yeah, the Steelers have a good defense. Again, TJ Watt, probably going to win Defense Player of the Year. Cam Hayward's been solid. But, like, their offense is putrid. I'm just going to say that right now. Their O-line stinks. Their running game, Najee Harris is good, but like we don't even know if he's going to be playing. I think he's questionable right now. So, yeah, like who knows what's going to happen with him. Like Deontay Johnson's fine, but I think he's overrated. Uh, Big Ben is washed. He needs to retire this year. I think he will. And like who else do they have aside from that? Claypool? I mean, the Cl Claypool's a diva. I'll just be honest with that. He celebrated a catch after picking up a first down with like 30 seconds left and no timeouts against the Vikings. Like, who does that? And then, of course, you have the Chiefs with Patrick Mahomes and that offense is just insane. No, they're not going to get Clyde Edwards-Hilaire back, I don't think. So they'll probably go with Daryl Williams at running back, but he's solid. And then, of course, Tyreek Hill, Travis Kelsey, good luck stopping those two. I mean, last time, I think Travis Kelsey was out against the Steelers last time, and they still dominated them. So, yeah. Like, McCole Hardman's been solid. Brandon Pringle can be good when he needs to be. And then their defense isn't too bad either. So, yeah, like, they got Tyron Matthew. So, yeah, that's what I'm going with. I'm going with the Chiefs here to easily win 35-14. to And then finally, the last game is the Monday night game. We've got the Rams versus the Cardinals. And I'm going with the Cardinals here, and here's why. Look at their road record. Whoops. All right, there we go. I really wish I could stop that. Look at their road record. 8-1. and one. Yes, their one loss was to the Lions. But here's the thing. The Lions have owned the Cardinals for the past five years or whatever. The last five games in the regular season, the Lions have won four of them. And the one game that they didn't win ended in a tie. So, I mean, can you really get on the Cardinals for losing to the Lions like that? Plus, they were so depleted at that time. 
They might be getting DeAndre Hopkins back. I don't really know. For sure. Actually, I don't think they are going to get DeAndre Hopkins back. But even without him, Christian Kirk is solid. Zach Ertz has been a good pickup for them. They traded they traded they traded for him from the Eagles. So yeah, and AJ Green. AJ Green's having a nice little restart to his career. And then Chase Edmonds. I don't know if Chase Edmonds or James Conner are gonna play. Who knows? But if they do play, that's a solid one two punch right there. And Kyler Murray's looked pretty strong as well. Both on the ground and through the air. So yeah, and then of course you got the Rams. And yes, the Rams have a good team on paper with uh, Matthew Stafford, at quarterback. Everyone thought they were going to be one of the best offenses in the league. Cooper Cup, amazing year from him. Probably going to win Offensive Player of the Year, if I had to guess. Either him or Jonathan Taylor. But yeah, fantastic year from Cooper Cup. Van Jefferson has been a nice little receiver for them. Tyler Higby's been solid. Odell Beckham Jr., I don't really know what's going on with him. But, I mean, he can make big plays when he needs to. They're getting. They got Cam Akers back, which is impressive. He can't. He's coming back from a torn Achilles. Even if he didn't play, Sony Michelle has been solid for them as well. And then, of course, on defense, Aaron Donald's always going to be tough to stop. And Von Miller, Jalen Ramsey, they got some good players. Um, but here's the thing: Matthew Stafford, like he's looked like the old Matthew Stafford from Detroit the past few weeks. He's thrown, I think, eight interceptions in his last four games. That's not good. And if he plays like that, they're going to lose. I mean, yeah, like you just don't know what you're going to get with him. And I don't trust him in the postseason. So that's probably the main reason why I'm going with the Cardinals here. Plus, the Cardinals just play so well on the road. All right, so that is the wild card game. Up next, we are going to go to the um, divisional round. So starting off with the Buccaneers versus the Cardinals. So I've already talked about these two teams in depth. I don't really need to go over them again. And even though the Cardinals are going to be on the road here, I just think the Bucks outmatch them overall. I think the Bucks are a better team than the Rams. I know the Rams beat them earlier this year, but to me, the Bucks are the Bucks just like it's hard to bet against Tom Brady in the playoffs. Like you really just can't like they lost to this. They got smoked by the Saints twice last year. And then when they faced him in New Orleans in the playoffs, they ended up beating them. So, yeah, like Tom Brady in the playoffs is just a tough guy to get to get past. So I'm going to go with the Bucks here to beat the Cardinals. And then we'll go with the Chiefs and the Bills. Chiefs and the Bills. So I think this is a repeat of last year's NFC ch or AFC championship game. And last year the Chiefs obviously won. This year... I think the Bills are going to win because the Bills, I think they faced the Chiefs earlier this year, and they crushed them. So I've got all the confidence in the world that they can beat them again. I think the game will be very close. And by the way, I keep forgetting to give scores. For the Cardinals-Rams game, 30-27 to 27 Cardinals, Bucks over Cart, and then the Bucks will beat the Cardinals, I'll say like 33-27 to 27 or something like that. I think it'll be pretty close. Bills-Chiefs, I'm going... 27 to 24 on a last second field goal i think the bills will win i know arrowhead's a difficult stadium to play in but the bills i think i think the bills are a very slept on team in the playoffs right now i really do so up next we will go to the Bengals versus the titans and you can't really see them i can slide it over there we go so yeah it's about 156 right now so the Bengals-Raiders game is actually starting in about 30 minutes. But yeah, so the Titans and the Bengals. So the Titans. i got to talk about the Titans. I don't know how they ended up with the number one seed this year because they didn't have Derrick Henry for over half the season. And now they're getting Derrick Henry back for the playoffs, I think. And like at receiver, they'll have, they have a good one-two punch in Julio Jones and A.J. Brown. Ryan Tannehill has been a decent quarterback for them. Their O-line's not too bad. And then on defense, their defense is looking a lot better this year, I think. There's still some holes that need to be filled, but their defense has looked a lot better. Now, the question is, is Derrick Henry going to return to form in this game? That's the main question, and I don't really know. I think if he does, then I think the Titans can definitely win this game. But if he doesn't, 
then they're going to have a lot of trouble, especially if the Bengals can get on the board early. Again, their defense, the Titans' defense has some holes in there that need to be filled, and right now they're not filled. So with the Bengals' offense, I think if they can score early and score often, they can outmatch the Titans in this game. They really can. I could see it happening. And in fact, I am going to go with the Bengals here. I'm going with the Bengals, upset the Titans, and move on to the AFC Championship game. I think it can happen. Whether Derrick Henry comes back or not, like, the Titans are, like, they're a good team, but I feel like they're kind of inconsistent as well. It's amazing that they're the number one seed, because I don't really think they're the best team in the AFC. I really don't. Yes, they did beat the Chiefs earlier this year, but still... Like, I think the AFC is kind of up in the air, I feel like. Any team in the AFC, except maybe the Steelers, can, I think, go all the way to the AFC Championship game. So, yeah, I'm going with the Bengals. Another upset pick. And then we go to the Packers versus the 49ers. And once again, I'll look over here for it. So we got the Packers versus the 49ers. Let me tell you something. If you're a Packers fan... There are two teams in the NFC that you probably would not want to face. Those being the Buccaneers and the 49ers. I don't think you want to face those teams as a Packers fan. The Buccaneers because, well, look what happened last year. Tom Brady, and Tom Brady's just a tough guy to play against overall. And then the 49ers. Look at the history in the playoffs between Aaron Rodgers and the 49ers. They faced each other three times. The 49ers won all three times, including a game in Lambeau Field when it was like two degrees out or something like that. It was a frozen tundra. Like, I know that stadium is a tundra, but doesn't mean the 49ers can't win there. Again, and I know the Packers are undefeated there, but doesn't mean the 49ers can't win there. Now, the Packers, of course, are a very good team. Like, they might be the Super Bowl favorites right now. Aaron Rodgers having an MVP caliber season once again. Devontae Adams is a beast. Aaron Jones and A.J. Dillon are a great one-two punch at running back. Um, and Alan Lazard and Marquez Valdez-Scantling, they've made some huge plays. The question with Green Bay is their defense. Like, if Kevin King ever plays in this game, like, that's just asking for trouble, I think. I don't know if he will play. Eric Stokes has been a solid, has had a nice little rookie year, I think. But yeah, their defense I do think is vulnerable. Despite how powerful Aaron Rodgers and that offense are, their defense I think is vulnerable. And again, if Jimmy G can expose that Packer defense like he did in the NFC Championship game two years ago, then I think there's a good chance the 49ers can go on to the conference championship. So this game for me was kind of a coin toss. I don't know which one I originally wanted to pick, Green Bay or San Francisco. I mean, Green Bay. if Green Bay was up against anybody other than San Francisco or Tampa, I would pick them for sure. But I am going to go with the upset here. I am taking the 49ers to move on to the conference championship game and face off against Tampa Bay. So yes, neither one seed is going to make it past the divisional round this year, based on my predictions. Yeah, I think the Bengals will knock off the Titans in a close matchup, 33-30. to And the 49ers will knock off the Packers on a last-second field goal, and they will win 33-32. to So yes, it's going to be a one-point game. It'll come down to a Robbie Gold field goal. So, yep, that is what I am going with. I'm going with the 49ers. That's probably my biggest upset pick of the playoffs, but that's what I'm going with. All right, so now we go to the conference championship. Bengals versus Bills. I think this would be a fantastic matchup, and I think it would be a fun game to watch. It's kind of an offense versus defense type of situation. This game would, of course, be played in Buffalo, but... Again, I think, I think the Bengals could have a chance to make a Super Bowl run. And then so could the Bills. Like, this game for me is a literal coin toss. It could go either way. 
But for this game, I am going to go with the Bengals. There's just something about this team that I think... Like, there's just something about this team that is so that just seems so special to me. Like, they're destined for a deep run. And again, if they... If they lose this year, they can improve their O-line in the draft, and they could be one of the best teams in the AFC next year. Very well could be. So yeah, I'm going with the Bengals here to take down the Bills. It'll be a close-fought matchup, but in the end, I do think the Bengals will take it. We'll go 27-23. to Give me the Bengals. And then you got the 49ers versus the Buccaneers, and as much as I want to pick the 49ers to go to the Super Bowl and face the Bengals in the Super Bowl. That would be the third time the 49ers and Bengals faced each other in the Super Bowl. Like, the first two times, I think it was like Super Bowl 16 and Super Bowl 23 or something like that. Correct me if I'm wrong. The first time they faced each other, the 49ers won fairly easily. The second time was a very close game, but the 49ers did come away with it. So this would be a rematch of those two Super Bowls. And of their game earlier this year, where the 49ers ended up winning in overtime after the Bengals came back from a 14-point deficit in the fourth quarter, thanks to Jamar Chase and Joe Burrow. But yeah, like I would love to see that, but I just think I just think they're outmatched by the Bucks here. Again, Tom Brady's a tough man to beat, and unfortunately, I just don't think the 49ers are going to be able to do it. I think they're going to fall a little short. I think the Bucks will win 35 to 30 and they will go to the Super Bowl once again. Which leads us to the Super Bowl. Buccaneers versus the Bengals. You've got the young gun in Joe Burrow versus the old timer in Tom Brady. I think that would be a fun matchup to watch. I think both offenses are very potent. Both have strong defenses, but the real thing is who has the stronger defense? And I think Tampa does. So I know that Tampa has a bunch of injuries and issues at wide receiver, but I still think Tom Brady's going to be able to get it done. Tom Brady, again, he's just a tough guy to bet against in the Super Bowl or in the playoffs in general. Like, no matter, like, when he was with New England, right? Who Against Atlanta, like, who did he have? Julian Edelman was his number one guy. I think, did they have Gronk that game? They might have. And then they relied a lot on their run game as well with James White. But other than that, like not a lot of big names on those Patriots teams. And then again, even against the Rams a couple years later, not a lot of big names on that Patriots team other than Tom Brady himself. So Tom Brady doesn't need all the big names in the world. Mike Evans and Gronk can easily carry him to a Super Bowl. Because, I mean, Tom Brady's just the greatest quarterback of all time. You can't really deny it at this point. And I think he will lead the Buccaneers to another Super Bowl. It'll be the first time that any team has repeated Super Bowl championships since, like, the early 2000s, back when the Patriots did it, I believe. So, yeah, the Buccaneers, I think, are going to do it once again. They are going to win the Super Bowl. And Tom Brady will get his eighth ring. So, yep, those are my playoff predictions, guys. Those are my playoff predictions. And, like, I'm sure I'm, sure I'm going to be wrong. My playoff predictions for all sports age about as well as a gallon of milk left outside in the middle of Phoenix in July. So, like, I'm probably going to be wrong. Like, the Bengals are probably going to lose to the Raiders now, but... Yeah, like these are my predictions. What do you guys think of them? Let me know now in the comments below. Make sure to hit that thumbs up button if you enjoyed this video. And what are your playoff predictions? Who do you think is going to win the Super Bowl this year? Who do you think is going to go to the Super Bowl or the conference championship games? Let me know down below. And next week, I was originally going to do this video this week, and that was I was going to talk about Mario Kart. Like Nintendo made an announcement regarding, or there's rumors about a new Mario Kart coming out. So I might make a video about that next week. And once again, these goddamn notifications need to shut up. Ser seriously, shut up. I, I wish there was a way to get rid of that. But anyway, guys, let me know what you think of my predictions in the comments below. And until that next video, once again, my name, I am going to kill this freaking computer if it keeps popping up like this. Once again, my name is the California Cougar, and always remember to stay California cool. Peace.